introduce myself. My name is Leah Cozier. I'm the Associate Professor for Fire Science and Forest Conservation at the University of Florida. And I will be co-hosting this with Vic Bankus, who is from the USDA Forest Service, the Southern Region Native Plant Coordinator. Thank you all for coming. Uh, Thank you all for coming. <laughs> His reputation proceeds. Oh. <laughs> So um, I'm going to start with a little bit of background on the two organizations that are responsible for bringing this workshop to you. So first and foremost, the RTEC, which started out in 1946 as the Range Seeding Committee, and it was developed to organize equipment and technologies for addressing land degradation issues in the western U.S. primarily. It evolved into the Range Seeding Committee and then the Vegetative Rehabilitation and Equipment Workshop, and then finally to the RTEC today. And many of you might be familiar with one of the landmark contributions that RTEC has made over time, uh, which is associated with the rangeland drill. And it's one of the most widely used tools in rangeland restoration over the last 50 years. And although it was originally constructed by the Forest Service in Oregon in 1951, the actual design that was commercialized was created by the RTEC. So out of curiosity, is there anybody in the audience who has used <coughs> the rangeland drill or has seen it in operation? Great, okay. So that's one of RTEC's earliest contributions and lasting contributions. And they've done a number of things, but one of the things that they wanted me to point out is um, a recent product, which is the Revegetation Equipment Catalog. And this is something that has received international attention. It's widely used. And it looks at um, a number of different techniques and tools and technologies that are really integral to restoration regardless of what kind of ecosystem you're working with. And so it talks about where to find them, how to find vendors to get them, who sells them, how to use them, and uh, best management <coughs> practices in some cases. So that's a tool that's available to everyone online. And the overall mission of the RTEC is to promote the wise use and improvement of rangelands through the supporting functions of equipment development and application of innovative technology. And they focus on seven different components. And this workshop was structured today to try to cover most of these different things. Um, we're going to be talking about plant materials, seedbed ecology, some weed management, site preparation and seeding, and especially fire. So if you want to find more out about the RTEC, or look at some of the previous workshops that are all posted on the website. You can find it this way. And we're also sending around a sign-up sheet. Vic, would you mind sending that around? So for those of you in attendance, if you wouldn't mind signing up, and then you can opt into the listserv for either the RTEC or the Southern Fire Exchange, which I'm going to talk about next. So the Southern Fire Exchange, which is sponsoring this workshop, was created in 2010 by the Joint Fire Science Program, and it was initiated in order to respond to some criticism that the Joint Fire Science Program was getting, in that a lot of science research was being conducted, but it wasn't making its way onto the ground. So really, getting that science and information and technologies to the ground level of land managers <coughs> who needed the most. And so this is a consortia, it's one of 14 that are across the country, and this map is soon going to include uh, a portion in the eastern region as well, the northeast, so that's coming into existence next. And all of these are oriented towards creating kind of a two-way path between fire managers and science providers. So the goal is to increase the applicability and availability, and the application, sorry, of fire science information and natural resource management. And Southern Fire Exchange works with a number of different entities. And uh, how about if you see one of your logos on the <coughs> screen right now? Would you mind raising your hand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so about half of the people in the room are partners. And we're always looking for more partners to work with. So the Southern Fire Exchange is very interested in not only um, supporting partner efforts, but working together to address management needs and to address fire science needs as well. <coughs> so we work together in everything that we do. We have four main program focus areas. One is the online resource center, which is something that we've uh, attempted to make comprehensive. So a one-stop shop for all of the information that you would need for restoration tools, technologies, and the latest fire science and how to apply it. 
We plan to deliver and support webinars, field days, and workshops to bring together fire researchers and land managers and to pave that two-way path. So it's not a one-way direction that we're interested in. We also get and solicit a lot of feedback from managers on the ground to try to inform the science community about what kind of research is most needed. What are the knowledge gaps that need to be filled for managers to best be able to do their jobs? We disseminate fire research through newsletters, research syntheses, fact sheets, bibliographies and presentations, and through all of these other activities that we participate in. And then all of these things are, are oriented as well towards public education and outreach efforts. And those are things that we partner with other organizations to do and to accomplish. So our resource exchange, our resource center website has a lot of different things on it. Um, it's worth checking out regardless of what region you're in. There's a lot of information that crosses over from our region to other regions and then across the country. Things like the bibliography that we help um, maintain with the Tall Timbers Research Station, tools for fire planning, research briefs, fact sheets, and all of these things are things that if you would like to have more copies of, we are um, very happy to send you those and you can distribute them amongst your stakeholders as well. We also have a discussion board and a forum, so if you have a burning question, sorry to use the pun, um, this is something that you can post on our discussion forum and get some answers from experts too. So it's kind of a neat way to, to get those, those questions off your back that you want to address and you want to make sure that they're being addressed by people in the know. So we have a wide diversity of researchers who are available to answer those questions for you. So this is also a nice thing for those of you who might be instructors or educators, a nice uh, tool and a nice reference to let your students know about. We have a number of different fact sheets and these are available outside and you're welcome to grab them. And like I said, we are happy to give you more of them if you want. Um, they cover a wide variety of topics, not only looking at specific topics uh, that are of interest, but also talking about um, techniques and tools and methods for accessing information. So for example, um, predicting smoke movement with computer models, how and what models are available for you to use for predicting smoke movement. Um, and then some basic ecology stuff, like nests on fire, effective season of burn. And we have a new series, which is uh, put together from our main author, is Dale Wade, and he was with the Forest Service for how many years, David? So, about 90 years. Yeah. So he's got tons of experience and a lot of wisdom accumulated through those years that he's sharing with the fire management community. So those are um, a really neat set of, of fact sheets that deal with different aspects of, of using prescribed fire, the effects of prescribed fire, how to manage it, um, how to interpret fire behavior and things like that. So those are really neat to look at. So these fact sheets again are available on our um, resource website. And then finally, I just want to tell you about our Firelight's newsletter, um, which is very, very popular. Uh, it's a bi-monthly newsletter, so if you do agree to sign up for the listserv, then that's what you'll be getting, is a bi-monthly newsletter, and then a bi-weekly um, uh, fire updates, which we just initiated. So we're not gonna fill your, your inbox with anything more than those two things. And um, people who have opted to be on the listserv are very happy to be there from the feedback that we've garnered. So we talk about a number of different things in our newsletter, upcoming events, um, opportunities for employment, um, discussions with managers, implementation of new technologies and tools, and so on and so forth. So those newsletters are also something that are available on our website, and I think we have a couple of copies that you can see in the back as well. So that's the Southern Fire Exchange and what we do, and the RTEC and what their mission is. And I think there are some overlapping missions, and, uh, and those kind of are oriented towards the concept of what I'm calling restoration technology to bring these two things together of long-leaf pine ecosystems. So both of these entities support the development and dissemination of this restoration technology. If we think of technology as being the use of science to invent useful things or solve problems, I think that's what a lot of our science and our management is oriented towards, and we learn from that. In the southern region, the restoration of longleaf pine is really a problem-solving opportunity and depends on a wide range of tools and techniques and a wide range of visions and certainly a lot of experience and reflection on that experience. And there are a couple of challenges that characterize restoration of longleaf pine, and you'll hear a lot more about this specifically from our speakers today. 
But what we're dealing with in this region, for those of you who might not be from here, is about, and this is an estimate of course, but about 3% of the original mature longleaf plant forest um, remaining. And that had a lot to do with unsustainable timber harvesting, clearing lands for agriculture and for development, and of course fire suppression leading to degradation of forest quality. So some of the challenges that are associated with this long history, about 150 years worth of loss and degradation, include lack of sea sources, uh, mixed successes with planting and seeding, and you'll hear more about that, um, altered soil fertility, pH, and organic communities, a real challenge, a uh, higher component of late successional species, outcompeting our target species and our target species assemblages, Close communities with limited opportunities for seedling requirements, and that of course leading to um, the need for, for sophisticated silvicultural techniques. And all of the changes in flammability and disturbance regimes that are associated with these differences in vegetative composition, in vegetative, um, in vegetative species and cover and type, and the microclimate, how it's changed in relation to those things as well. So all of these challenges are things that our speakers today are going to address in one way or another. And like I mentioned, um, with the seven items that RTEC focuses on, we're going to talk about seed technology, production, planting techniques and tools, mechanical vegetation management methods, and of course, fire. And so finally, in the introduction, I'd like to just um, show you what I'm calling the adaptive restoration cycle. And I think what we're going to be talking about today is really the product that you see in the green box of everything else that has gone into it. And of course, what people are, are going to be sharing with you today is uh, living knowledge, right? So this is knowledge that is being contributed to and changing and then affecting management um, techniques and that feeding into monitoring, being analyzed and interpreted, and then leading to new knowledge and technology. So our goal here is to show all of these different aspects that could lead from restoration of longleaf pine ecosystems to maintenance of longleaf pine ecosystems. And so with that, 